What's up, geeks, gamers, and capsuleers? My name is Draymond, and welcome to Thorium Gaming. So, the basic PI video I put out was just a brief explanation for a very specific purpose, but a few members of the Atrium Project have asked me to go into a little bit more detail on how to set up these planets. So, I have decided that I'm going to invest in some more planetary interaction. And I can do it right at home in a tree. So, we're going to get started. So the skills you're going to need first off, because we always want to go through the skills first, are all under your planet management tab. Doesn't seem like a whole lot of skills, but they do help out. The big ones are command center upgrades. That is literally your bread and butter of this entire uh, objective. Every level that you get this up gives you more CPU and power grid to allow you more facilities on a planet. It really, really helps you out. Interplanetary Consolidation gives you an extra planet for each level you have, maxing out at 6 when you hit level 5. So at level 3, I can have 4 planets. I already have one that's doing some coolant production for fuel blocks for the project. And now we're going to set up 3 more for a product I'm going to discuss in just a minute. Now Remote Sensing, it allows you to scan planets further away from you. A little bit easier gives you time to scout out without actually having to travel to them. Now, planetology increases the scan resolution of a planet. Same with advanced planetology. What these do is when we get into actually setting up the extractors for what we're going to be looking for, it will narrow down where the best spots to put your extractor heads are. It will give you far greater data on the best positioning of your resources on the planet and allow you to get more per cycle than you otherwise would. And that's it. That's all the planetary interaction skills that you need. So let's just close my character sheet and let's open up what I'm going to be building. Construction blocks. They are a refined, I believe they're called, tier 2 product. They're used in tech 2 construction. They're used in constructing buildings. They're a very, very useful commodity to have around. If you're doing any two, tech 2 production, Odds are you probably want to do some PI to make these, and they're actually really easy to make. So what are we going to need for this? Well, we're actually going to need some base metals and heavy metals, so that we can turn those into reactive and toxic metals respectively. These will then be combined into the construction blocks themselves on our construction planet. Usually I try to find barren planets, but a temperate planet will work just as well. Barren planets and temperate planets allow for the highest level of uh, planetary interaction construction and allow a lot more power grid usage and CPU. So they're great for building your constructor planets, which is just factories. So what we're going to start off with is I am in an Interim Mark V. Basically completely unfit. So I've got 6,000 meters cubed inside of my hangar here. I'll scroll down and what we're going to need is a gas command center a lava command center, and a temperate command center. We're going to be drawing our base metals off of a gas planet. We're going to be drawing our heavy metals off of the lava planet. And then we're going to be combining all those materials on the temperate world to create our construction blocks. So a train has a lava, a gas, and a temperate planet all in it. So I don't have to actually leave home. But if we look at the size of these, they're a thousand M3. So we can fit the command centers in and we won't actually have to dock up or anything. So I'm going to take all three of these command centers and we're going to toss them into what I call Planet X. It's just a little Any Mark V. Don't really need a big ship for this. Just something basic. So let's undock and then I'm going to warp to one of the Atreum Project factories to allow us to tether and be relatively safe. You don't actually have to be in orbit around the planet. You just have to be within range of it. So let's just warp to zero warp drive active. on our factory. And of course the factory is open to anyone who wants to come in and use it. You don't have to join the Atreum project. The tax rates are very, very, very low. And we have a factory with both labs and a construction line. We have a good refinery out here as well. You guys are more than welcome to come and use them and enjoy the benefits of having them without having the detriments of being able to be war decked. That's my concern, not yours. But while we're doing this, let's look at a train itself and we'll go to the orbital bodies. So planet 1 is a lava planet. 
Planet 2 I've already got in production because it's making coolant for me. So it has facilities on it. We're not going to be using it today. Atreen 3 is our going to be our second construction planet. And we'll probably go with one of the gas giants that's in here because we got three gas giants and a storm planet. So some pretty decent planets for planetary interaction within the system. So what we need to do is actually go back into this window. I don't know why I closed it. Since lava's at the top, let's look at the lava planet. View planetary production. So right now, we're just looking at a lava world. It's beautiful. Really good textures. It's nice. But we're going to go over here and we're going to select scan. And what we're looking for is heavy metals, which is the best thing on this planet. So at the outside of the scan, we can see where these metals are going to show up. As they approach white, that means there's more of that resource there. So it looks like we got a cluster there. We've got one hot spot there, one hot spot there. Ironic since it's a lava planet. But this looks like our best area to set down our extractors. So let's just scroll in a little bit. This is at the maximum scan range. Now my skills are not perfect, so we're not going to get perfect results out of this. However, if we take this slider right here, and slide it over to the left, it will allow us to see where the real hotspots are. How far down you scan is completely up to you, but that looks like a good scan radius there. So now here's the trick. The command center itself is not entirely useful into the process, aside from assigning power grid and CPU to everything else that we're going to do. So if we click on the build tab, take a lava command center, and let's just plop it down right here in the cold zone. And then we're going to click submit. This saves all the changes. You're going to be saving your changes a lot as you go through this so that everything gets into motion. So let's click on our command center. Not a whole lot. It does have a little bit of capacity, but these are not the most efficient way to transport items on and off the planet. We'll get to that in a minute. What we have to do is go to our upgrades and we'll upgrade it to the maximum that we can. So this will give us an extra 9,000 power and a lot more CPU. It's going to cost me 2.7 million ISK to do this, but it's well worth it. So we'll get the upgrade in place and we'll submit our changes. Alright, so it looks like these two patches here are close enough together that we can limit the length of our routes. And I'll get into what routing is in just a moment. So we're going to go to a launch pad. We're going to set the launch pad as close to equidistant between the two points as we can. There we go. So the launch pad is where all of our resources are going to go and it's from here that we're going to send them up to the orbital customs office. Makes life a lot easier. It has a heck of a lot more storage than the command center does and it's just convenient. So let's look at our extractor control units now. These have a radius on them. And they will be able to put extractor heads anywhere within that circle that you're seeing. So as I move it around, that white area is where they will be able to place down heads. Now we want to keep as many of those extractor heads in the white area as we can without getting too far away from the launch pad. So if we go about there, that should set us up. Now let's go up to this patch, run mine on this side as well, do the same thing. Try to keep it close to the launch pad, but within range of what we want. And let's submit that. So right now we're not using a whole lot of power and we're not using a whole lot of CPU. But these things are all unconnected. So what we have to do, right click on here and create a link. Create it to our launch pad. And the link tool is still up, so let's left click here, back to the launch pad, and click submit. I suggest uh, submitting all of your changes as you go through the process so that you don't build up a whole bunch of stuff, make one mistake, and lose everything. So this is our lava world, and we want to extract heavy metals. So what we're going to do is actually go down to this one, and we're going to go to install extractor program. Now. I don't have a lot of time to do PI, but the shorter your extractor window, 
the more resources you'll pull out, but it also means the more you have to come back to the planet to do it. Because I'm extremely lazy, I'm going to do it the most, quote, inefficient, end quote, way possible. So we're going to set it to a 14 day cycle, and we're going to look for heavy metals by selecting it here. It's going to bring back up our scanner with our sensors. Now let's install a few extractor heads. We'll do five for this one, and we'll do four for the other one. So now you can see these heads are getting a little bit staticky. They're starting to lose income based on their positioning to one another. But they can be spread out amongst the area that the white circle encompasses. So if we go there, and there, give us 98 and 97 on those heads. Zoom out just a little bit. And we'll pull this extractor head over here. It's going to give us 107. Pull this one down here for 106. Let's see if we can find something in the 100 range or better without getting too close to our others. 103 looks really good. So now we can click Start Extraction. This will pull resources out. But before we leave this command center, we have to go in and route our products. So if we go into the products and we click the heavy metals and create route, then click on our starport and click create route. Now everything that this extractor head pulls up will go right to the starport. So let's submit our changes there. And let's repeat the process over here. We'll go a little bit quicker this time. We want heavy metals on a larger cycle. Put five heads in over here as well, since we have the CPU and power for it. Spread the heads out to try and get the maximum amount of resources coming out of this as possible. The other extractor head is obviously in a better place, but it doesn't really matter. I use construction blocks myself, and this is a personal project. So we'll start the extraction on that. Go to products, heavy metals, create a route to our launch pad. Create route and submit our changes. And now we can just sit back and wait. Everything that these extractor heads pull out will automatically go to the starport. And then when we're ready to extract them from the planet, we can just access the customs office and transfer them from this launch pad up to the customs office. So we can actually exit planetary production mode. That takes care of our lava planet. But we have several options for gas planets in Atreen, and we're looking for base metals. So let's open Atreen back up, go down to the first gas planet, and view planetary production. Just like before, we're going to scan first. Let's minimize this window. And we want base metals. Looks like around the inner ring, and we got a nice little hot spot right there. But we only checked planet 5. So let's check planet 6 too. See if the base metals are higher. They're about the same. They got a better link pattern on it. Another hot spot. But let's keep checking just to make sure that we're not missing out on potential resources. And this is the weakest of the three. So it looks like we are going to go with planet 5. Scan for base metals. There's a nice little hot spot there. We can expand this a little bit to see how far out we can go. Alright, that looks good. So let's just exit out of that show info. We'll build. Again, we'll just put a gas command center down wherever it needs to go and submit. Go through. Upgrade our command center so we have the most power and CPU available to us. Submit the changes. I think we're going to be able to get away with one or two extractor heads here. It's not going to be pulling up a lot of base metals, but I'm well overstocked on base metals. This is just an example of where we're going. So again, let's put our gas launch pad as close to the center of where we're going to set up as we can. I'm going to put down a couple of extractor control units. One there. One there. Now the reason why we want to keep these close is the longer the links the more power and CPU they take. 
So every time we create one of these links, as you can see over at the mouse cursor, it's actually going over 3,700 kilometers. It's going to cost us 565 megawatts and 755 teraflops of CPU. So the longer these links go, the higher the cost goes. That's why we want to keep these relatively close together. Again, submit your changes as you go. So let's go into our extractor head here. Install a program. We are looking for base metals. I think we're going to go with six on this one because the other spot is not that great. We're going to expand it to a 14 day cycle. Because again, I don't like checking my PI for more. And you can go right out to the edge of the circle with the extractor head doesn't have to be within the circle completely. Let's see if we can draw up a fair amount of base metals. Just don't want any of these to be overlapping so that they're interfering with one another, drawing up the same minerals. And that will work. And before we leave here, we will create a route to our launch pad. If I don't accidentally click somewhere bad. So we'll create the route to the launch pad, create route. Submit the changes for that one. You'll notice that there is a lighter blue line there now saying that the items are going that way. So let's finish off by setting up our second extractor head program. I think we're only going to need four on this one. Make sure that they're set up at the same time and we'll spread them out. Try and get as much into these red zones as we can. It's not a perfect planet for bringing up these kind of resources, but it'll work. And we'll start the extraction on those. And then route our products back to the command, or the launch pad. Submit our changes. And that's it. So now we wait on these two planets to take all the resources that we need out of them. But now what are we going to do with them? Well, that's where our construction planet's going to come in. So let's view the planetary production on a Treen 3. We don't need to scan anything on this, but for reference you get aqueous li liquids, autotrophs, carbon compounds, complex organisms, and microorganisms from temperate planets. But we don't need that. Just to make things look nice and pretty, we're going to find ourselves a nice looking continent. Somewhere around here. That almost looks like uh, the EU, Britain, and all that. It's a nice little storm cell there. I know it's kind of besides the point, but sometimes you want to make things look a little bit nicer. And since we're going to be installing a lot of civilians on this planet, factory workers mostly, they should be around something that looks nice. This mountain range looks good. So let's go to build, and we'll put a command center down. And we'll submit that. And we will of course upgrade it so that we have the maximum amount of power and CPU available to us. Submit that. So this is where it gets a little bit more complex. This planet is going to be used for nothing but production. And all it's going to produce is construction blocks. So the first thing that we are going to do is going to create a temperate launch pad right there. That's step one. This is where we're going to drop our base and heavy metals in. All it's going to do is store those metals. Done deal. So we need some basic industry facilities. I want to keep these as close as possible to save on the CPU and power. Because we have to turn those base metals into reactive metals and we have to turn those heavy metals into toxic metals. So, to do this, we need baseline factories. So let's submit those changes there. Let's create a link between them and our launch pad. Because they are going to be taking resources in. Submit. Now this launch pad doesn't have any items in it yet. Nothing in storage. But if you go to storage, once your links are created, we will find our base metals and heavy metals in here when they're stored in the starport. And just like 
with the extractor units, we will create a route. And we will route to each one of these for the one thing they are creating. So with the basic factories, you have a ton of things that you can create. So with our base metals, we need to look for reactive metals. And we will install that program. That's going to use 20, and it's going to output 20, which is just fine. For this one, we are going to install toxic metals. Same idea. But now what are we going to do with these particular products? Again, this is the lazy man's way of doing it. You can get more complex, but this is the way I like to do things. So I think it is a basic factory again. I can reset it if it's not. Yeah, it looks like it is the next one up. So that's my bad. Not perfect. So you want to go to your advanced industry facilities. And slot this out as close to the other two as you can get it. There we go. Submit that. And we'll go inside. And construction blocks. So now it's going to need the toxic metals and the reactive metals. It's going to need 40 and 40. So these are only producing 20 each. So I'm probably going to add another two facilities here to feed into this. So let's actually do that while we're waiting. Throw another basic one on this side and on this side. Then we'll create our routes. So let's create our link here and create our link here. This one is running on base metals. So this is going to be reactive as well here. Install the reactive. And we will install toxic here. Appears I forgot to hit install on this toxic metals. Alright, so now we've got four facilities producing the base level stuff that we need. So what we're going to do is create a link from each one of our Tech 1 factories all the way up to the advanced factory. So when they produce their route, their resources, they're all going to come here. It requires 40 and 40. We are now producing 40 and 40. So products here, we can actually route them right now even though it hasn't built anything. Just like before on the other planets, let's create the route in there. Products, select the reactive metals, create route, to the advanced. Products, toxic metals, create route to the advanced. So, there we go. Products, toxic metals, create route into the advanced. Submit. Why is that not going on these ones? I forgot a step, I think. Create route. There we go. I'm not perfect at this, obviously. Skipping a step, but I'm going to leave it in because, well, it is what it is. Okay, those are routed. These products should be routed. Just this last one to route properly, because I'm a goofball. Alright, so now we have all of the baseline materials coming in to create construction blocks. Well, how are we going to get them out of here? We don't want to use the same starport because it's going to get a little bit confusing. So we're going to build a second launch pad right there. We have the CPU and power for it. And from our advanced, we're going to create a route to said launch pad. If we go into the products that it's creating, i.e. the construction blocks, create the route to the second launch pad, submit those changes, and that's how that's going to work. The products will come in here. They will get sorted out to the four baseline factories. Those four baseline factories will produce them to the advanced factory that it uses exactly the amount that we are needing. And it's going to pump out the construction blocks into another launch pad. 
then when we go to the customs office we can actually select which launch pad we want to interact with we can put materials here and take the construction blocks out from that launch pad and that will be that it's a pretty simple process if you study what you are wanting to build you can set these little factory worlds up and create a tier one or tier two i guess it is product pretty easily when you're going into more advanced things, all you have to do is expand upon this. So if we were going to build something in the tier 3 category that used construction blocks, we create another set. I would probably move all of the construction block materials over here, do it, the other item here, and then the third factory would be where the construction block one is right now, feeding in from both sides, and then out to a launch pad. It saves on route length, it saves on power grid and CPU usage, and it does save a little bit on money too, because you're not installing a whole bunch of extra stuff you don't need. But this will create construction blocks after we get the resources in. And that is pretty much it. So if you like the video guys, please consider hitting that like button. If you'd like to join up with the 232 or become part of the Atrium project, just hit that subscribe button or join our channel in EVE and have some fun. Remember guys, life is a game, so play to win. And until next time, Fly dangerously.